स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so let us look at another example uh, but before that let me also introduce an a further generalized scenario of variable end point criteria right so i am going to or i am going to talk about a topic that is known as the transversality condition so what exactly is this condition and when is it going to be applicable the transversality condition okay so what exactly is this so suppose suppose we consider uh, consider we consider a an extremal which is y y of x so y of x is an extremal it joins a point let's say x not y not to a curve so let's say this is a curve which is denoted by gamma we will show that the joining point is such this point let us say x1 y1 it joins the extremal is such that it joins a point to a curve and the joining point is such that the point of intersection is always at right angles this is something we will show very soon so the question is what is the condition uh, what is the what is the equivalent boundary condition for this setup where uh, we have to extremize a functional extremize subject to one of the end points on a given curve on a specified curve right or we could also have a case where the extremal y of x with two end points x not y not and x1 y1 are on two specified case are on two specified case are on two specified curves gamma 1 and gamma 2 right well we will show that in both these uh, points of intersection this curve intersects the extremals always at right angles so again we we would like to figure out what is the criteria end point criteria for this case as well or in general what happens if the end points lie on a specified curve right so what i said is the following so consider consider an extremal extremal y of x consider consider an extremal y of x joining joining a curve a curve to a fixed point that is my case 1 which is this case or or joining two curves right which is this case right more often than not some uh, many of these problems will involve for example finding the shortest distance between two curves or the shortest distance between a point and a curve or a shortest distance between two curves right so so for such a case how to approach uh, such a scenario so what we do is in this situation we are going to specify we first let the the curve be defined in the form of a parameter so we specify the curve we specify the curve gamma parametrically right so we are looking at case 1 right this is my case 2 so i am talking about case 1 here so specify my curve gamma parametrically right so let me call this as uh, the curve with components x gamma of zeta x gamma of xi y gamma of xi right where uh, where my my so which means my variation delta x now is they are all lying on the curve which is dx dz right this is dx gamma so x lies on gamma times delta z right and my variation y is dx gamma well d y gamma dz times delta 
xi, right? So, I specify the curve parametrically such that delta x is this and delta y is this, such that, so in this case, let us look at my end point criteria. So, my end point criteria condition becomes uh, p delta y minus h delta x, uh, delta x at the point x 1 is equal to 0, right. So, again this condition is applicable at this particular point x 1, ok. So, this is the condition I am going to talk about, ok. So, I am going to replace my delta x and delta y since they lie on the curve. So, so which means what I get is the following p times d y gamma d psi minus h times d x gamma d psi times times d psi this is equal to 0 and further notice uh, further note that uh, note that x gamma del x gamma del psi del y gamma uh, del psi these are all uh, tangents these are my tangent vector, this is the tangent vector to the curve gamma, right. So, this is nothing but the tangent vector. So, let me call this, this criteria star. So, my star says that, that my, my star says that my tangent, my tangent to the curve the tangent to the curve gamma is perpendicular to the vector v which is prescribed by minus h comma p. Why? Because notice that this is nothing but nothing but the dot product of minus h comma p dot with uh, del x gamma del psi right comma del y gamma del psi right. So, this is the dot product and we show that the dot product is 0, right. So, now we have shown that the transfer cell, so this is indeed, this is what we call as, this is what we call as the transversality condition, right. So, what it says is that whenever, whenever the end points they meet on a curve, they will always do so, such that they meet at right angles, right. I call this in short notation T c. Okay, uh, let us look at a quick example in this class of function. So, we have to find, find the shortest path, find the shortest path from origin, find the shortest path from origin to the curve, to the curve r gamma, which is x gamma y gamma right with the path length r gamma with the path length given by f of y which is the integral from 0 to x 1 which is the integral from 0 to x 1 square root of 1 plus y prime square d x right. Okay. So, what have we got here? <coughs> we see that uh, we see that of course, the solution to this integral is a straight line. <coughs> Let me calculate the various quantities. So, the momentum function will be partial f partial y prime where my f is this quantity integrand. I see that this is y f of y prime divided by square root 1 plus y prime square and my Hamiltonian is y prime partial f partial y prime minus f. This is after evaluating comes out to be minus 1 by 1 plus y prime square, right. My transversality condition, let us plug in, well, I do not need to solve the Euler-Lagrange because I already know the extremal which will be a straight line. I need to figure out the family of the, the specific family of the straight line. So, I am going to directly use the end point criteria which is now going to be the transversality condition because one of the end point lies on the curve. 
right. So, I use the transversality condition T c which tells that p del y del gamma del y del psi minus h x gamma del psi. This is at x 1 is 0 and we plug in p and h I see that this is also equal to y prime d y gamma d psi plus uh, plus h was equal to minus 1 times d x gamma d psi divided by square root 1 plus y prime square. This is equal to 0, right. And this is also we are also saying that the dot product of x gamma del x psi comma uh, del y gamma del psi dot product with dot product with 1 comma y prime this is equal to 0. Note that this is nothing but this is nothing but the tangent the tangent to the to the extremal right the extremal curve that we need to find and this is nothing but the tangent the tangent to the curve on which the end point is defined. So, the dot product is 0. So, I know that so I know that uh, so so well so further further equation the further solution to this equation is possible once we know the exact form of gamma right. So, let me look at some specific cases. So, suppose I look at a simple case where uh, where my gamma is the arc length of a unit circle arc well arc length of a circle uh, centered at origin arc length of a circle centered circle centered at so I separate this right up centered at origin and then I expect that I expect that my extremal my extremal y of x will be the radius right. So, because in that case for an arc length of a circle only the radius is going to meet the arc length at a distance at perpendicular to the arc length right. So, radius uh, from starting from the origin right. So, that is my extremal. So, that can be found from directly from the transversality condition. Let us look at a slightly more involved case. So, let me give gamma suppose gamma is of the form gamma of psi is of the form psi minus 1 comma psi square plus half right. So, so my transversality I know that my extremal y of x is uh, m x plus b this is directly from uh, Euler Lagrange uh, solution of geodesic right. So, we are we are solving the geodesic problem. From here what I see is the following the transversality condition gives me uh, if we if we differentiate I see that this is 1 comma 2 xi the dot product is uh, dot product with with the tangent to tangent to the extremal which is equal to 1 comma y prime which is m. So, my transversality condition is the following right. So, from here I see that the condition reduces to this 2 xi m plus 1 is equal to 0 or or my xi the variable xi is negative 1 by 2 m ok. Now, further we know that there is a common point of meeting of the curve and the extremal right. So, at common point of intersection common point of intersection intersection I see that y at x 1 is also equal to gamma at xi evaluated at x 1 right. So, what have we got is y at x 1 will have the following form. So, so what I have I got is so, y at x 1 the x y coordinates are 
x1 comma y at x1 well certainly uh, the equation well we have one more condition that we have uh, well the original problem says that the starting point is from the origin right so my extremal will be such that my b is 0 so my extremal is y is equal to mx because only this straight line passes through the origin so which means my points y are at x1 is x1 comma m at x1 right and on the right hand side at x1 i see that this is also equal to zeta minus xi minus 1 comma xi square plus half and this is also equal to note that xi is note that xi is negative 1 by 2 m right so if i plug xi i get that this is negative 1 by 2 m minus 1 comma 1 by 4 m square plus half right okay from here i have two equations and two unknowns for m and x1 i solve i see that i see that the equation that i get is 4 m cube plus 1 is equal to 0 it's a cubic equation and the only real solution i get is negative 1 by cube root of 4 so this is the only real solution right and then the rest of the solution will follow uh, namely my extremal now is y is equal to mx which is negative x by cube root of 4 which is my specific class of function which satisfies the transversality condition given the curve uh, given this curve right so that completes the description of this problem and let us now look at uh, let us now look at another generalize this transversality problem for the class of functional having several dependent variable so what i just said is the following so problems problems involving involving several several dependent variables right so we are talking about extremals of this form extremals we are talking about ex, extremals extremals of the form j of q bar is equal to integral from t0 to t1 l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot dt with end point condition with end point condition given by p k delta q k minus h delta t is equal to 0 with end point condition as follows ok so now uh, further to uh, impose the transversality condition we also have to impose the curve on which one of these or both of these end points lie so suppose suppose uh, t my free variable or independent variable lies lies on the surface because now it is multiple dependent variable so we have surface given by t equal to psi of q bar right so t lies on the surface such that t is equal to psi of q bar which means uh, which means that uh, so i need to find the variation delta t and delta delta q q bar or delta q1 delta q2 now we we look at that variation one by one so so let me just say that we look at variation only in the first component of q assuming the variation in the second component is absent what i said is the following so consider consider the variation the variation in only only first component only the first component let us say q1 right so which means we are holding q2 to be constant the second component as constant and what i get is from here i can see that since t is in on the surface right I see that delta t is del 
delta t is uh, partial psi partial q1 times delta times delta q1 right so delta t can be expressed in terms of delta q1 as follows because t lies is on the surface similarly similarly uh, for variable q2 for the other component q2 with q1 fixed with q1 fixed i can derive i can derive uh, i can derive uh, i can derive similar you know similar uh, relation between delta t and delta uh, q2 okay so that that's it so of course all these extremals are such that they satisfy the system of euler lagrange equation right so now uh, notice notice let me call this as star and call this as double star so so from here star my fixed endpoint condition p delta x p delta well p delta y minus h delta x condition so y now is p delta q bar minus h delta t set equal to 0 condition reduces to this this simplification reduces this criteria to p minus h times partial psi partial q1 times delta delta q1 set equal to 0 similarly from the other coordinate i can find setting from from the other situation i can find a similar a similar relation with respect to q2 right delta q2 so students can complete this expression which is very much identical to the first one so so let us let us look at uh, let us look at an example in this class of problem right okay so let us look at an example the example i have is as follows i need to extremize extremize j of q bar which is integral 0 to t1 square root of 1 plus q1 dot square plus q2 dot square dt i need to extremize this where q bar of 0 is 0 and my t1 is variable but but t1 lies on the surface psi of q bar which is given by q bar of well psi of q bar of t1 which is given by the following curve which is q1 at t1 minus 1 square plus q2 at t1 minus 1 square under the root let me call this curve as a1 so essentially this curve is the surface of a cone so this is this particular surface is the surface students can draw that surface of a cone with vertex with vertex uh, 1 comma 1 comma 0 1 comma 1 comma 0 in 3d okay so essentially the problem is asking in the geometric sense the problem is asking find find the curve find the curve in r3 from from the origin right we have taken t equal to 0 right so from the origin to the cone to the cone with with minimum arc length right notice that this quantity inside this integral is the arc length functional so we are trying to minimize the arc length okay now well of course we need to satisfy the euler lagrange my euler lagrange equation the system of euler lagrange for th this is a geodesic problem 
my Euler Lagrange equation will directly give me the solution as straight lines. So, I need not solve that. I see that my solution q bar in terms of t is in terms of these constants alpha bar uh, t plus beta bar, where my alpha bar and beta bar are vectors, because this is a set of two equations beta 1 comma beta 2. And we see that uh, further we are given one boundary condition q of 0 is 0. So, which means that since this straight lines passes through origin, right? Since this boundary condition, right? Uh, since I have q bar at t equal to 0 is 0, I necessarily have that beta is 0, identically 0. So, all I need to do is to find this alpha, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, all I do now is well, we have already utilized all our boundary condition. What is remaining is the transversality condition. So, to find the transversality condition, let us find the momentum and the Hamiltonian. So, my momentum p k uh, in terms of, so this is partial f partial q k dot gives me q k dot divided by square root of 1 plus q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square. And my Hamiltonian h is, is summation q k dot k from 1 to 2. Uh, p k minus l and after simplification I get that this is the expression minus 1 by q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square, right. I see that my transversality condition, uh, my transversality condition reduces to the following. For q 1, uh, so I see that this is the set of transversality condition uh, derived in my previous slide. So, del L del q k dot minus h times del psi del q k is equal to 0, right. So, this is for k equal to 1 and 2 and from here I see that I, I simplify this expression on the left hand side to get that the equation is q k dot after plugging in L h and psi q k dot plus del psi del q k is equal to 0. I already know the equation of the surface psi and after plugging in that value, I immediately get that alpha k comes out to be minus alpha k t 1. Uh, so, this is evaluated at t equal to t 1, t equal to t 1. So, minus alpha k of t 1 minus 1 divided by t 1. So, from here, my simplified expression is 2 alpha k t 1 is equal to 1 or so this is satisfied for both k equal to 1 and 2 or this is equivalent to saying that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2, right. And also the fact that uh, well let me let me renumber some equations I call this as a 3 and finally I call I call the equation of the straight line. I call this equation of the straight line as my a 2. So, notice that from from a 2 a 2 and and my equation of the surface my surface equation is a 1. So, from a 1 and a 2 I plugging in the values I come to the point where alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square is equal to 1 and given the fact that both alphas are equal, I see that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is 1 by square root 2 or my extremal my q 1 is equal to q 2 is 1 by square root 2 times t. So, I have found the extremal and students can check that for this extremal the point of intersection, the point of intersection intersection of the curve psi of q bar with 
with the extremal q bar is at point is at point 1 half comma 1 half comma square root 2 okay this needs to be checked and i leave it to the students to check since everything is given to us so i end my discussion in this lecture and in the next lecture we are going to see another formulation of euler lagrange which is a broad which is going to cover a broader class of problems especially arising in continuum mechanics namely we are going to describe the euler lagrange via the hamiltonian formalism thank you for listening thank you very much